says, finally got my latest Goulet box, my long wished for pilot vanishing point with the 1.0 stub nib and am disappointed with it. Ah, oh, I'm sorry, Denise, but it does happen. Okay, so let's get into it. I know Japanese nibs tend to be ground finer, but in comparison to the 1.1, sometimes, I'll explain that in a second. Um, from both Lamy, sorry, the 1.1 from both Lamy and Twisby, this one feels sloppier in the writing. I have small writing and a light touch, but expected to fall in love with this, and I didn't. Do you think it's likely to be a nib issue or an expectations issue? That's the theme of the question. I loaded it with Liberty's Elysium and have liked that ink just fine with the other stubs. I expected this one to be finer and more precise, but it just looks more like a mushy medium than a 1.0 stub. Okay, Denise, a lot of meat to this question. So you got a couple of different things in here. Um, the whole like expectations thing is one thing that'll also lead nicely into the next question that I have, but we won't get there quite yet. Um, then you're talking about the, the grinding of nibs versus Japanese versus German, which both Twisby and Lamy use German made nibs. Uh, Lamy makes their own, Twisby uses either Bach or Yovo depending on the pen and when you've bought it. Um, so either way, all German made versus Pilot who makes their own in Japan. Um, generally speaking, it's kind of universally known amongst fountain pen people who really kind of get into it that Japanese and Germans grind their nibs very differently, or just European in general, which a lot of the nibs come from Germany, um, but European nibs in general tend to be ground a little bit broader than the Japanese finer nibs because of the characters and the way they write in Asia, Japan and China and all that. Um, but uh, it's not every nib size, and it's not like, oh, an extra fine in a Japanese nib is like a fine in a, in a, you know, a European, or a medium is like a broad. It's not necessarily one-to-one -one like that. Um, usually what happens, the finer nibs, like the extra fines and fines, are usually about a size down from where the European nibs are, but not really the case with mediums, broads, and stubs, okay? Now, in general, this is really just a pilot thing because pilot, excuse me, makes all their own nibs in house. So they do things, they're all proprietary nibs, they do things their own way. Yes, they're a Japanese company, so they lean towards, you know, the way that other Japanese uh, companies grind theirs. But uh, there's a huge fountain pen culture in Japan, so actually all the Japanese companies grind their own nibs. So Platinum, Sailor, Pilot, they all do their own nibs. Whereas in Germany, Bach and Yovo are the two really big nib makers. They provide other companies with their nibs. So they make the vast majority of them. There are still some that make their own nibs, like Lamy, for example. They make their own nibs. Bach and Yovo don't make Lamy nibs. But in general, those other companies will make the nibs for most other pen companies. So when you're talking about Pilot, I have to really talk specifically kind of about Pilot and the way they do things. In general, Pilot's extra fine and fine nibs are significantly finer than the European ones. The mediums are usually pretty spot on with the exception of the um, Metropolitan. The, the $15 steel nib, that I find is a little finer than even the gold uh, pilot nibs. So the, the, but in the vanishing point, the medium nib is usually pretty on par with the European mediums. And then the broad is on par, if not a little broader even, than some of the Europeans. So it's, there's a wider range between extra fine and broad. And then when you get into stubs, it gets a little different because there aren't a lot of Japanese stubs. It's just not really the way they write, so there aren't a whole lot of them available. Um, but Pilot does have them. Um, they have them in uh, the Custom 912 as well as the Vanishing Point here. And you, the Vanishing Point stub is a relatively newer offering. It's not something they've been doing for years and years and years, um, but they do have it. However, um, they grind their stubs just a little bit differently than Europeans do, especially because you're talking about a gold nib versus a steel one. And so let me break that down a little bit. So Twisby and uh, Lamy, which you're talking about here, they don't make uh, any, uh, Twisby doesn't make any gold nibs. Lamy has some gold nibs, but no stubs, at least in the US. They m might have a stub on the Lamy 2000. I'm not sure about that actually. But anyway, not in the US anyway. I don't know if they've ever done it in Europe. What, um, so we're talking about, but probably the Lamy that you're talking about is like a Lamy steel nib, um, which they do have, uh, you know, stub. They call them metallics, but they're stubs uh, on there. But the difference is when you have steel, uh, stainless steel stub nibs 
with rare exception, uh, one exception I'm thinking of is the Pelican M200 um, is tipped, but um, there's usually no tipping material on the stubs. So basically the thickness of your tipping or the, of your tip on most steel stub nibs is just the thickness of the nib itself, which is relatively thin. So you don't have this like big ball of tipping material on the end that's then ground to be italic. So in general, your lines tend to be fairly fine uh, on the, the on the cross stroke with steel uh, steel italic or stubbed nibs. That's a very bunch of generalization, but specifically with Lamy and Twisby, I find that to be you get pretty good line variation on the cross stroke and downstroke because the stub nib is kind of flat like this. It's not a round ball like you have on a normal nib. Uh, I know I'm kind of covering basics here, so bear with me, but um, that's kind of what's going on. So on the cross stroke, it's going to be a thin line because it's just the width of that nib there, um, whereas the downstroke, you're getting the full breadth of it. I guess it would be more height and width. I don't know. My terminology is getting mixed up, but you get what I'm saying. Um, so specifically with the pilot stub nib, I have found that in general, whether you're talking about the stub nib, whether you're talking about um, the Pilot FA nib or any type of, type of soft nib, Pilot generally does better when you hold your pen at a higher angle than you do when you hold it lower like this. I hold my pen at a very low angle. And, you know, 45 degrees um, you know, from the page is pretty much ideal for most fountain pens. I actually end up holding my pen probably around a 40, maybe even a 30, nah, 35 might be a little low, but probably around a 40. So usually you want a 45, that's kind of where they're gonna write most ideal. Pilot nibs, I find they're more like a 60, is, is ideal for most of their nibs, especially ones that have any degree of line variation to them. Um, and the, just the Japanese styling and the way they usually write, they hold their pens higher up and they generally do short strokes with characters. It's different than the European way of writing with long connected strokes and stuff like that. That's why usually things like the Pilot Falcon or the FA nib called the Falcon nib on the Custom 912, other things like other soft nibs on Pilot's pens, you know, they can, they can be finicky for the way that most you know, European languages write is because the Japanese style of nib is really suited more for the line variation short strokes of characters as opposed to long flowing Spencerian script, right? So um, that, that tends to be a bit of an adjustment for most people. It's kind of, you have to adapt a little bit to the pen. That is kind of what's going on here with your stub nib. I find that when you hold the stub nib down more like that, you get uh, actually less kind of line variation between the cross and downstroke. And like you said, it kind of ends up being like a mushy medium because you're not getting as distinct of a variation between the cross and the downstroke. Whereas if you hold it at a little bit steeper angle, you're gonna see more of that variation start to come out. So I think, you know, having a light hand is good um, in which you said you do. And small writing, you know, I don't know. Small writing in general with a stub nib, might not necessarily always go well together. But I think if you hold your pen at a higher angle, I think that will help a lot with it. Um, I will say, you know, the ink does come into uh, a little bit of a play here. Liberty's Elysium is a great ink. It's, you know, I helped design it. It's, it's like my brand, right? Um, it's not the perfect ink for all situations for everyone. Um, in, you know, in general, when you have inks like that that have a permanent component to them, um, it can uh, absorb a little bit more into the paper because the, the chemical components that make the ink uh, permanent are more absorbent and they soak into the paper more. You see this specifically with Noodler's inks. Um, you know, it's not so much an issue with like pigmented inks um, like the Platinum Carbon Black and stuff like that because they sit more on top of the page. But for the more permanent inks, they tend to absorb a little bit in that permanent component. So depend if you have a very wet writing pen or if it's kind of like mushy looking like you're talking about, um, it could be that the, the, paper, the ink is absorbing into the paper a little bit more, which might not necessarily be helping. I don't know what kind of paper you're using, so I can't really say, um, so to speak, but that just for general knowledge purposes, that could be a factor. Um, let's see here. What am I else need, needing to cover? Um, Okay, finer and more precise, yeah, and okay, so is this an expectations issue? I think that could be part of it. Um, I do have a video out uh, on the Pilot stub nib, the Vanishing Point stub nib, you can check that out. 
Um, just look it up on YouTube or um, check our blog. I've got that. Um, also, in, we have a tool on our site called the Nibnook, where you can see written out writing samples with uh, Noodler's Black on Rhodia dot pad paper for consistency's sake. Um, and you can see how that looks compared to you know the Lamy or the Twisby nib. So you can literally see side by side with my writing how it looks. So you can get an idea of, do I have the proper expectation? I try to put these things into our site so that you know at least as much as possible what to expect ahead of time. So I don't know exactly what research or, you're, or whatever you're able to do ahead of time. Um, and lastly, I'll just kind of say, like, you know, you can try a different ink. Um, I would try adjusting your pen angle first. I think that's going to be the quickest and easiest thing for you to do to see if it's really just, you know, if it's that simple. Try a different ink, try a couple different papers, just experiment with whatever you have and see if it makes any kind of a difference. Um, that's the thing is like I always, whenever I get a new pen, I always try it out with some stuff I'm pretty familiar with. You know, Rhodia paper, whatever, Noodler's Black is kind of my go-to ink when I'm first testing it out. Um, or I'll try some other kind of inks that I really like. Um, if I don't get something that meets my expectations or I'm being surprised by something, it's not flowing well, it's not doing whatever, I'll clean the pen, I'll try a different ink, try a different paper, and just see, test around different things to see is it just a, a, a combination factor of, of things that I'm dealing with. And it's just, you know, because the pens can be, uh, they can behave differently on different, on different things uh, with different ink and all that. So I usually just test out and experiment a little bit before I'm like, okay, this pen doesn't work, you know. Um, and lastly, the biggest factor is just, you know, you, your writing, your preference, your style. It could just be that, you know, it isn't meeting your expectations. And that's a bummer. Uh, but it happens, you know, it's like, it's like any other product or tool that you would use. It's not going to be perfect for everybody. So it really could come down to if you try all this stuff and you're like, look, this, this isn't what I was hoping it would be. I would, that would stink and I would hate for that to happen, but it's very realistic. I'm a very realistic person that happens all the time. Um, specifically now, like right after the holiday season, we have, you know, a lot of people that are returning stuff and it just wasn't their expectations or it was a gift and it's not what they wanted and all that happens all the time. So. If that's the case, you know, you mentioned you got the pen from us. We are more than happy to help you troubleshoot it, help you, um, you know, exchange it or return it or if you, if you want to uh, do that. So hit, up, hit us up on info at gouletpens.com or returns at gouletpens.com, um, and we are more than happy to help you out with that. So that's kind of the process there. Bit of a lengthy answer to a fairly complicated question, but coming back strong with Goulet Q&A here. So <laughs> welcome back. <laughs>